it is me, Johnson Chan, and today is January 3rd, 2018. Yes, I made sure to update that in the title. Uh, so it's been a few days. Um, I actually did eventually sell my 35 million 123123 order of 808 coins. And let's see. Um, so I initially sold it for I think 51 or 50 for a little bit and then prices kept going down across the board for all co uh, cryptocurrencies then I eventually just sold at like 42 or 43 super fast um, so I wound up getting like 15.23 Litecoins I did exchange some of my 808 coins for Dogcoin but it was only like 20,000 before I got impatient so um, yeah so that's how much I made and that turned out to be like well, now it's like 3600 when I finally sold my Litecoin on Coinbase because I waited a little bit for the prices to recover. Um, so as you can see, uh, the correction, uh, I think the correction's mostly over. So now it's like, the, I guess, the calming period. You know, Bitcoin's back up at 15k, Ripple's still going up like crazy. Now it's at like 3 bucks a piece. And... Oh yeah, Ethereum's also going up like crazy. So the demand for cryptocurrencies is just, you know, hot, hot, hot. And then Dogcoin, where are you? Yeah, this thing, this thing has been doing amazing. I was also, now it's at like $1.06 billion now. Um, and then yeah, for the most part, it's all greens across the boards. The reds aren't even that bad. Um, so what's cool is, even though I sold, I sold for too little, this seems to be a recurring problem for me. I always sell right before everything goes up. It's very irritating. You know, if I want to be able to buy my, I think coins market's still down because of the server upgrade. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I always miss out. So how am I going to get my real estate if, uh, you know, I forgot about that again. If, uh, you know, keep getting less money than I'm supposed to, but, you know, oh well. That's first world problems, right? So as you can see, uh, 808 coins hovering around those 77 to 85 Satoshis of a Litecoin mark. And you can see the nice little huge spikes upward. Uh, that might be a little too much. Let's go a little there. So bottom out. Well, did it really bottom out at... Oh, that's 36 Satoshi. Yeah, so it bought them out around, I guess, January 2nd, and then it shot back up, and now... Uh, let's take a look. I don't think this thing is done... Oh, yep. Now it's shot up around here again. So I think it might have a good chance of going back up to 100... to 120 Satoshis of a Litecoin, if we're lucky. Um, but, I mean... I think this is just simply catching up on prices along with everybody else on the... You know coin market cap um, because if you look at sprouts this had a similar thing too like it, it shot up to as high as let's see six hour mark yeah it shot up as high as like 60,000 which was up here and it did it again over here span of quite a few days before settling back down a little bit around 41 to 43,000 satoshis of a dog coin which is still really good for sprouts I've also noticed that my sprouts have not been staking as well because the difficulty is just so hard. So therefore my inflation, therefore the inf my inflation rate and probably everyone else's inflation rate is also, you know, decreasing because of the difficulty. Um, so that's probably helping out prices too. But all, but all in all, you know, it's really nice. If you got in when everything was low, now is a good time to start doing a little profit taking because everything's going back up. Um, as for compound coin, I actually have not been paying attention to this. So now that I'm just doing these streams, that's the time that I look at it. Because right now I'm still 100% compounding. And even though in my book I recommend that you withdraw profits when you're first starting out, uh, the, re the primary reason why I recommend that is because most of you that's starting this 
you probably don't have a lot of money, and I'm assuming you have some sort of emotional problem with doing investing or trading or whatever you want to call this. So by getting that money in your bank account, even if it's only like a few cents or a few bucks, depend, depending on how little that you invested in, that helps alleviate the, the, uh, the emotional component of doing this. Um, because that, that's how I felt. Even though at that, even though I've been doing this for a long time and you know I have a lot of experience, you know the the emotional instability can still be there because you know you're constantly thinking about how you're going to pay your bills and stuff. So uh, that's the reason. In my case, I already have a lot of money now, and obviously I know this works, so I can afford to play a lot more greedy. Um, because now I'm at a different level. You know, I'm still doing the same thing that you're doing, which is just staking and compounding, staking and compounding combine the blocks, profit take when, uh, you know, every minting cycle. Uh, so the process is still the same, but your mindset is, uh, you know, going to be different depending on your situation. So that's funny how that works. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, just, you know, as I predicted in many videos so far, you know, compound coin has gone up, but it has not, the APR has not halved uh, just yet. So, um, let's see. So, dog coin is doing good for compound coin. Let's take a look at LTC. Uh, this has improved a little bit. Not really much to work with here, though. Yeah, it's been kind of boring, but it has gone up from 30s to like 40s and 50s. So, it's gone up. So, that's all that matters. Speaking of which, um, I'm trying to think where. Nope. I could probably turn that off. Uh, turn that off. Grief. Okay, so I'm going to have to bring this up. Um, comps. Oh, it, it saved it. Comps. Ah, you just showed me it. Yep, there it is. Uh, so compound coin is up to block eighty thousand two hundred eighty-seven. So in a little, so when it, so in a little less than twenty thousand more blocks, or block one hundred thousand, it's going to go down to two fifty percent. Okay, so it's got a little bit of time. Um, so yeah, now compound coin is more expensive, but I guess if you want to get into it, you know, you can still get in kind of cheap. Uh, there's no telling how high this thing will go. It, um, when the APR splits, and of course, when the APR split does happen, it could still actually go down because, again, you're dealing with you know human beings, and humans are not rational. Eventually, logic and rationality will um, take its rightful place in the market, but it may not be immediate. Um, so, just bear that in mind if you want to get into compound coin. Uh, and of course, good old Sprouts. I already touched on this a little bit, but yeah, it's gone. It's come down a little bit from its highs of 60,000 Satoshis of a dog coin. That's because dog coin's been going up, as you saw in the chart before. So, there's a, a, you know, a little bit of a loss here, but still not too bad. And considering what you're getting in return, and you know, the 24 hour, does this have a 24 hour, hour volume? Wow, the 24-hour volume on this is amazing. 8.8 .8 million dog coin trading hands for Sprouts. Whew, where's Preve? How much is that? How much money is that? I really would just prefer the regular one. Yeah, there we go. 8800123. Eight, zero, zero, That's 80840 $80,840 per day for a exotic cryptocurrency as I call it yeah, that's that's really good you know just imagine if you had 10% of that it's eight grand a day you know I bet you could do a lot with eight grand a day I know I could um, so yeah so this is still very stable paying out really well uh, and it's still relatively cheap overall if you wanna get started staking on this 
So even though uh, my bias is still towards 808 coin, if you want to start stake, you want to start out staking with Dog Coin and Sprouts Coin, uh, this is a probably uh, a pretty good safe bet. Uh, you just have to be aware that there's less technical support, and the developer has technically abandoned the coin, but not really. You know, he he just wants to put this on stasis. I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> um, so yeah, just that, and then. And coinsmarket.com has been having so many problems recently. Um, at least they brought back the chat. Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright, so I don't think they're a scam, um, but that's always a possibility. And hopefully they'll just get done with this stupid upgrade and, uh, soon. Um, so unfortunately the thing's not up, but I still have my huge order of 421 coins. And that's why I have not added it officially to my book or the list yet it's still in trial phase because of stuff like this because you never know maybe uh, coins market will run off with everybody's money Th then the coins screwed but yeah I uh, got a pretty big fill order um, I got an, an additional 1 million 421 coins so let me check my my thing I now have 4. Point, yeah, four, so I have like 4.7 million 421 coins, so that puts me, assuming say 113 million supply, uh, oh actually I, f I forgot, I don't have that, so let me just do web calc, man I really should keep this open, alright, so I have 4.7 million 421 coins divided by 113 million total world supply. I own... Oh, I still own 3.6% of the network. Oh, I thought I had a little more than that. Hmm. Oh, I did 130 million, not 113 million. Oh, no wonder. Oh, man, I gotta go all the way back. Yeah, I thought there was a little something off. Ah, uh, there we go. So now I own 4.16% of the entire network. So that's still pretty good. I'll probably be well on track to eventually reaching top three. Um, Alright, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, not too much. Um, you know, coins market's out, so... Go for the good stuff. Um, as to why cryptos are going back up, um, you know, after a correction, it's all about sentiment, so people feel depressed one day or for a little while and then all of a sudden the next day they're not depressed anymore and that's reflected in you know going back into the market and buying stuff which is which you can see here um, let's see as for news um, oh, so that's kind of cool I'm gonna eventually be able to buy real estate with Bitcoin hopefully See what fake news Washington Post has to say. Bitcoin Cash, yes, that's true. You do want to watch that. Because whenever people are scared of Bitcoin Core, they'll always dump into Bitcoin Cash. Uh, Zcash, I heard people like. Um, uh. Monero, Ripple. Yeah, so they're going with some of the old classic coins. Yeah, so if you're looking into doing more traditional cryptocurrencies, there are like the. I, I would refer to them as like the blue chip stocks, like IBM, like in stock market analogies, like IBM, Microsoft. Um, who else? ATT. I already said IBM. You know, the really, really big conglomerates, like, I guess, Philip Morris and R.J. Reynolds and all that stuff. You know, they're really big, they're really expensive and slow, but you know that they're stable. That, that, that's why their price is so, is so big. Um, so, uh, uh tight turns, uh, let's see what this says. 
So, so, so I think it's just price speculation. Mm. Yeah, this is just a technical analysis price speculation. That's not something I'm too interested in. Um, Bitcoin's ultimately experiencing no box. All right, so everybody's been getting in on writing about Bitcoin, so that's good. China Central Bank. Now, this is something I'd be interested in. Uh, keep that on. To regulate the power usage of Bitcoin miners. Huh. Well, I guess I'm just going to interpret this as if you don't pay us Bitcoin, we'll shut you down. Um... PBOC. Who's the PBOC? Oh yeah, that's the other interesting thing. Because it does consume a shit ton of electricity, power use consumption is actually a big problem in China. So that might actually that might actually be another legit reason why China's going after Bitcoin. Um, because they because they still want the yuan to be the main source of currency in China, not Bitcoin. Um, so. But you know, of course, I think they're they're ultimately going to fail, because you know, money always wants to multiply and always wants to be free. So any attempts to restrict it, you know, it always ends badly for you. Just look at Venezuela, and you'll see what I mean. Um, yeah, for the most part, it looks like Bitcoin news is pretty boring. Uh, Ripple. Actually, I do have people asking about Ripple, so. Just we'll take a look at Ripple. Personally, it's probably I just treat it like everything else. It's just a fad with like where the fundamentals actually have a fundamental use, um, but then it just gets overhyped or overbought because of greed. Uh, now I don't know much about Ripple except that. It's supposedly uh, mostly centralized, meaning there's an actual company that controls everything. And actually, that is true. Um, it's also very difficult to buy because I've noticed that a lot of the more, more common markets that I usually that you can buy cryptocurrencies from they don't list Ripple. I yeah, I had to go as far as like Australia. And then wait like a set, like I didn't do this, but the requirements on the Australia site wanted like a seven day ID verification period, which is just too long. Um, yeah, but Ripple has always been like top dog too, like top three, top two, top ten for sure. Um, yeah, of course. Um, bullish sentiment, yes. It's definitely that. People just want cryptocurrencies. They're just going crazy. It's got a similar... It's a feeding frenzy, essentially. <sighs> Is there any actual... F oh, yeah. This was possibly newsworthy. Someone did say that there was rumors that Coinbase was going to add um, Ripple Coin to their platform. Um... It's entirely possible, and it would actually be a good thing if you want to buy Ripple, because it's a pain in the ass right now to get it. Um, yeah, see, even this Forbes author owns Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum. Well, that's a good thing. He, too bad he doesn't know about my book. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> he could mine that and then tell everybody about it, and then, you know, we're going to have a lot of people invest. An 808 coin, and then at that point, with that frenzy, hopefully somebody that's a good programmer will come along and actually create applications and stuff for the coin. Uh, yeah, so this article is light. Uh, doesn't say anything. Yeah, too bad. Doesn't say anything about why Ripple. God damn it. Damn, I think I really do have to turn off my ad blocker. Uh, fine, you win this time.
guess that is a dangerous feeling because you're basically activating the uh, the win lose gambling mechanism that we all have. That's why gambling is generally very dangerous. Yeah, you're up today, but maybe next time you want to gamble even more because you want an even bigger hit, you know. And th and you're gonna mess up, and that one mess up is gonna wipe you out. Uh. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Ripple, um, that's the thing I didn't mention. So there is a demand for centralized cur uh, cryptocurrencies as well. Whereas, so where Bitcoin is decentralized and it's like very good for like people who want freedom, people, other people want security and they don't care about that much freedom. Or they just prioritize security more. So that's why centralization could be better for, for those people because they don't have to worry about people abandoning the project as much. They already know what they're going to get and everybody's more or less forced to, to follow the rules. Um, so Ripple is definitely centralized like here and then also Ethereum is also centralized and some people really like that. Um, and I mean I guess that could eventually be dangerous because if you import that type of thinking you know, into a nation or area that normally likes being free you know, you're gonna have some problems and tension um, so that's why personally I don't like centralization and also also if you want to like be anonymous centralization is obviously the opposite of that it'll be a lot easier for people to track you down um, so that's never good Okay. Excuse me. I'm kind of surprised that you can write a lot of words about a whole lot of nothing. Uh, yeah, they're fine. I think I. Yeah. yeah I don't see any significant reason so yeah again it's just market sentiment either ripple is catching up in price like it's supposed to or it's just um, going mad I just have to click that but that's gonna be the last one I gotta click but yeah it's it looks like it's just part of the speculative bubble so it'll go up to its correct price and then eventually it'll crack down to its to uh, what well, I shouldn't say correct price, but it'll go up to what people think will be the correct price, and then it'll correct back down to what it should be. Now, with that being said, Ripple has always been kind of undervalued, even though it's been in the top 10. So, I, I guess we'll just see how that plays out. Um... Oh, that's always fun. Asian crypto gamblers. So instead of gambling on, like I like on mahjong, like I see in Chinatown all the time, you know, <laughs> you got the younger generation of people just gambling on crypto. Uh, and gambling is always like a very tempting pastime for a lot of people. Wow. Asian accounts for at least a third of all crypto trading volume. Well, I guess that makes sense. Um, Asians are about what 40, 45 percent of the world's population. So 33 percent of that cryptocurrency trade volume consists of Asians. So that sounds that sounds about right. Um, I imagine the other third is like the European hemisphere and then the rest is like Western hemisphere. Um, oh, now here we go. Japan and South Korean banks are expected to test drive Ripple in the first quarter. Uh, the coin will be primarily used for institutions and not for retail transactions like Western Union or PayPal. 
Yeah, even though this didn't explain what that is, this is actually very important. Because the vast majority... Remember in previous videos I said that the daily Forex volume was around 4 to $5 trillion per day? Most of that trade volume is in between institutional banks and central banks trading and exchanging with one another. Ripple coin seems to be the coin that will facilitate that. So whatever systems are in place now, they're going to use Ripple coin instead, which I think will cut down on red tape transaction times uh, and overall just make everything a lot faster, but still be just as safe and stable. Um, wow. See, this is the information I was looking for. Like, what's the fundamental reason? So, holy crap. How much is Ripple Coin worth? 121 billion. Wow. So you could get a pretty nice slice of that. Daily Forex volume. I wonder if I can actually find. I wonder if they haven't updated. Okay, so there's a September 1st, 2016 article from a year and a half ago now. My God. Daily FX trading volume is now 5.1 trillion, so it's probably even more today, like 6 trillion plus. Um, 5 trillion a day. It's still 5.1 trillion. All right, so we'll say five to six trillion. So yeah, Ripple Coin can get in, can cut in on this. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of crazy. Wow. So yeah, I guess if you want to try to, you know, some people want to speculate on Ethereum, but maybe you should actually speculate on Ripple. But eh, for me personally, I just, you know, I, you know me, I don't, I don't go for capital gains, and I find it kind of annoying anyway. Which is a shame, though. Three dollars and fifteen cents is really, really cheap. You know, could so I guess if this test is successful, which it probably will, uh, barring te severe technical problems, yeah, Ripple could probably do a lot of money. Definitely, it definitely is going to have to hit a very high market cap in the trillions because the daily twenty-four hour volume on it needs to uh, be able to accommodate, you know, 5.1 trillion worth of foreign currency uh, trade volume per day. Um, so, boy, that's going to be crazy. Mind-boggling. So if it does overtake Bitcoin, I am curious to see what effect it's going to have on Bitcoin and everything else. I think eventually it will boot. It will... Uh, increase all the cryptocurrency valuations because people will be like wow ripple is doing so good but so expensive i want to get in on it what else can i do and then they'll see all these other cryptocurrencies and that's what starts the cycle like that's what always happens you know people hear about it's like the housing crisis or the dot com right dot com bubble people couldn't get in on i don't know pets.com or whatever was big back then. actually yahoo was huge back then it was like two three hundred dollars a share like man I wish I got in on Yahoo and this is like late 90s before early 2000 before the crash it's like oh but what maybe I can buy something else so people bought Amazon people bought random something XYZ dot nets you know, and that's how the frenzy goes and then real estate's the same thing people hear about the multi-million dollar you know single family house flips and they're like damn you didn't get into that but maybe I can get in on a different property and that's how the feeding frenzy works and before you know it, the Ponzi scheme, uh, you know, grows and grows and grows until there's no more people going into the Ponzi scheme. And then the whole thing uh, goes kaboom, collapses. But we're far away from that. Um, let's see. So, yeah. I was thinking about maybe doing, uh, whatchamacallit. Actually, I should probably close that. I was thinking about maybe doing, um, what is it? Well, I just realized, how does, I'm streaming on Twitch. How does YouTube, uh, 
douche we crap oh whoops well luckily that's my spam email that I never check so I don't care about that but uh youtube.com oh forward slash the lemon factor yeah that was weird oh I guess that was like an old thing that I had Oh yeah, stupid YouTube still hasn't um, freaking uncensored my video, even though a bunch of the exact same video is on. Like these these rat bastards on Google. Uh, meanwhile, like Logan Paul, like takes a picture of or selfie of himself with a dead body that's hanging from a tree, and like nothing freaking happens to him. Like God, I just hate selective enforcement of the rules. Uh, oh well, what are you gonna do, right? Alright, so I think that kind of covers it. Um, you know, my marketing efforts are going well. You know, you just keep posting on the high up forums. So instead of people investing in Ponzi schemes, like actual Ponzi schemes, you know, you can tell them to go into like proof of stake coins like 808. Just put in a little bit and that's it. Um, but yeah, I think that if the trend still continues, there, 808 coin is going to still explode in price because there's not a lot of supply for sale. Not for a while. Um, I don't think it's going to go up this high, though, 150, but you know, I guess we'll see. Any, anything can happen. Um, oh, that is true. There was something. See, I haven't done a very good job of you know, promoting my movie. And it's mostly because it's mostly a political thing. But, um,. Before I started doing this, I used to actually, because I used to do acting, so I did well background acting, and I wanted to make my own movie. And then I'm, at the time, I didn't know that Hollywood was full of like pedos and rapists and stuff, so I obviously had to, um, what you might call it, self-publish. So this is actually interesting. My movie's been out for a while, so I'm just curious to see like people who watch my movie also watch. Uh, yeah, Trump stuff, Bitcoin stuff, patent scams. It's kind of interesting to see what my customers are like. Yeah. Yep. So it makes sense. Bitcoin and Trump. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much. You're only gonna like this comedy if. Well, I used to admire House of Cards, and Sp Kevin Spacey was also, you know, a problem. So. Yeah, um, so, whatchamacallit, uh, let me think, oh yeah, so I kind of model this after, um, House of Cards a little bit, but if you're into video games and you're conservative, then you'll probably really like this movie, because that's primarily who I des uh, designed it for, as for, um, everyone else, uh, I guess it depends. Like, if you're into memes, you'll kind of like this movie. If you like to laugh at certain types of political comedy, you'll probably like this. And obviously, if you're a liberal or a Democrat, you'll probably hate the movie. Um, because this, because actually, someone was nice and gave me a higher rating, but uh, yeah. Well, this one's actually a fake review, but I'll leave it. Um, but yeah, pretty much you either love it or you hate it. And it's pretty obvious. Um, <laughs> let's see all 19 reviews. What was the most recent one? Yeah. Uh, top rated dude, most recent. Well, at least this guy was nice. <laughs> and the truth is, um, no, nobody really reads the synopsis, apparently. I mean, I do, but I guess a lot of other people don't, or they just browse it. Yeah. So I'm kind of surprised. So I'm kind of surprised at how how well the rating is at 50 percent with uh, <laughs> with that many negative reviews from like all the angry Democrats and stuff. 
But yeah, uh, give it a shot. You can watch it for free on Amazon, and then of course you can also buy it. Um, so yeah, underdogs. And also put it. That's also when I actually was interested in Bitcoin at the time, but I didn't know anything about proof of stake mining. Um, let's see. And then of course you know if you want to mine uh, cryptocurrency like I do, you can buy my book. It tells you everything that you need to know, including like what you need to do to get the laptop to get the laptop. And get it up and running. Um, if not, you can save yourself ten bucks and do everything. Just learn everything yourself for free. But obviously, I don't support give tech. I don't give tech support no matter what. But you have to just spend time and figure out yourself. Um, you know the co names of the coins that I stake, so you know I uh, uh, I, I explain it thoroughly in the book, uh, Mind Bigly. So. Let me see. No questions. Okay. Uh, I thought about maybe talking about Steve Bannon, but I'm just gonna let that beef play out. If I'm really that interested, I'll do a separate video of it. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's it. Um. I guess in the next, probably in like next four to six days, I will um. What you might call do another stream. Um, but yeah, uh, until then, uh, go watch my movie, Underdogs, if you want a, uh, good laugh. Um, buy my book, Mind Bigly. Uh, and yeah, and hopefully next time I will, you know, have a lot more money to talk about in terms of profits. Hopefully, I'll be able to get in when, you know, 808 Coin is still selling for at least, you know, 80 satoshis of 80 to 85 satoshis or higher of uh, Litecoin. All right, everyone. Uh, I think that'll be it. Uh, my name is Jensen Chan. Remember, buy Mine Bigly, buy Underdogs. It's actually under Doges, but I just call it Underdogs because you know whatever. <laughs> and um, I will see all of you uh, next time. All right, thanks. Bye.